So I just start by um, covering the block in cling film, which seems a bit funny, but um, it's to stop the straw from sticking to the block, because once you put the straw on, you then stiffen it, and the stiffener is like a glue, and you've never got it off the wood. So you cover with cling film and a bit of sellotape, then I pick a bit of straw, which there are lots of different kinds of straw. This is the most common, it's called parasizal. Then there's these, these are, that's called um, cinema, which is something which is bought on the meter, whereas this, these straws are a sort of three-dimensional shape. Spray on the inside, that's just to get it, um, get the straw supple. You can do the same thing in steam, but um, with straw it's not really necessary. With felt you tend to, you, you work almost exclusively with steam because it's a much tougher material. Straw is lovely and easy to block, it just takes shape. Um, very, very easily. So because this shape has got a dip in it, it's got this dip in, at the top, of, at the tip, I have to leave a bit of excess. If I pull it really, really tight, it won't, there won't be enough give. The, the top of the straw has this, where the weave comes in, you have these four points, and when you're blocking, you want to make sure that they are centered on the top of the crown so that they're not, because it's quite obvious when, when you finish the hat if it's off a bit. Anyway, so you get it there, you've got a bit of excess. Then you take your bag of rice, put it there, and that, that just acts as a weight, basically, to keep that excess there. And I just pull the straw, and you'll notice, because the straw is woven, actually, when I pull here, I'm getting it tight there and tight there. It's not going straight down. So as you work around, you can kind of use that to your advantage. So I tend to do one side, then the opposite side. Pull tight. Put a pin in. Do the quarters so that all this fullness will eventually work its way out and it won't be bunched up in one corner of the crown. Sometimes you'll see, I mean, if you look at old blocks, I've got a lot of really old blocks that I bought from milliners going out of business. They're quite old. I couldn't tell you how old. They're made, this one's made in England. Um, and they've just got tons and tons of holes in them. But even that can be, you can use a wood filler to, to repair them a bit. I mean, some of this, you can tell this has been broken off and glued back together. That's a little patch put on it. I mean, they're lovely things. Sometimes I buy them, I would never make a hat out of this shape, but I just love it. And it's so, I mean, I just think they're funny objects. And I, and I, I sometimes, often, because I do a lot of, all my pieces are worn off and I do a lot of adapting of things, I might use a cur one, I might just use this section of it and then it will become something completely different or I might use just these divots at the front. Because every time you put a pin into the straw, you're damaging it, basically. It's less an issue with felt because that's much stronger material. So you have to be very careful about what you do to it. Now that this would sit and dry for say three hours, so it's absolutely bone dry. And then you would, I would take the stiffeners in a, with a, with a paint, it's like a varnish basically, with a paintbrush, paint it on. This is where the cling film is very important. Otherwise, if I, if I didn't have the cling film, it would just be stuck onto the wood. Um, I would paint it on and um, then let it dry. And when the stiffeners have dried, so they put onto dry straw, then the stiffeners dry, then they have the quality of holding the straw into the shape that you've put it into, and they soften in steam so that I can either take a damp cloth on the iron and if I really want to work on a, a, a certain area, or I can put it into the, into a steam, you know, say a, a kettle on the stove, and have you have a, a, a bit of steam coming out of that, and you can use it. And so what they do is they soften in the steam, and then once you take them out of the steam and they've held the shape, when they cool, they then hold that shape. So they have a memory, basically. And um, that allows you to keep the materials in the shape that you want them. You can take a hat, which has been a bit battered and maybe sat around too long and been pressed out of shape or something and put a bit of stiffener on it and give it a bit of steam and a bit of a press and bring it back to life. Which is lovely really because hats are expensive objects and if they're cared for well and you know looked after they can be brought back to life which is nice. So that's basically the fully blocked shape for the brim. This is a hat that's been blocked, uh, I mean it's a couple years old but it's the same basic, the same shape for the crown and then I've put on a very sort of cloche, uh, strict kind of brim. Um, and then it's just very, this is about as simple as my hats get really, to be this kind of, just just the shape of the block. And I'm a sucker for red and white together really. Um, but clients do do have ideas. They're more about um, if it's to go with an outfit or something, then they'll have ideas about that. Or they will have seen something that I, uh, of mine that they'd like 
they don't really want that hat, but they like the quality. Like a client might say, well, I really like the way you use buttons, or I like the way that you've done this with a straw. I want a hat which is more like this, but can we use that, you know, detail? And that's, for me, that's lovely because then they've responded to something in my work and then they're letting me do something which is original for them and they will enjoy wearing it and they will brag about wearing it which is lovely um, because it's been made specially for them which is a pleasure really um, for both me and the person wearing it. So what the collections allow me to do is to have a range of say a few conventional pieces, a few small cocktail hats, a few bridal head pieces maybe and then a few really extravagant pieces which um, are for a very particular kind of lady really but they're the things I most like to do and um, they have become, I suppose, um, not a trademark, but something which, which I specialize in. So to start by pinning that bit in the way I did with a more conventional shape. The rest of it, I'm just working by hand. Um, I'm working with hand, maybe I do a bit when the straw is wet, I let it dry a bit, maybe I'll then stiffen, shape it again. I have to let the straw do what it does naturally. And then by using wire and stiffener and hands and <laughs> strong stitching, I have coaxed it into, into a shape which is much more, um, well, dramatic, really. A lot of, lot of ladies come to me and say, oh, you know, I, I don't suit hats, or I'm too short, or I'm too small, my face is too round, or but everyone's got another excuse why they don't like hats. But really what they do is they want something on their head for their daughter's wedding, or a party they're going to, or something where they want to feel special. And these kind of headpieces allow them to have that sort of presence and gravitas. This is the hat I'm doing for a client at the moment. It's only about halfway finished. Um, it's for her to wear to her daughter's wedding in the Caribbean. This is the fabric of the dress that she's she's had made. I'll make some petals out of this. This is something called Wonderweb, which is a very, very fine layer of blue, which is, uh, let's see, there we go, a bit of blue onto a paper. So I just press it down and it'll start to stick. And I'm really working it because it's quite easy for it to bubble. Pull it off. And when the paper was cool to the touch, I then start to peel away. And you can see that the glue is slightly shiny on the fabric. You can see where the glue is. Then I take the iron again, and you'll start to see that it gets a tiny bit shiny as the glue starts to stick to the second piece of fabric. I think I can more or less analyze the shapes of the, of the petals and just do them, cut them by hand. I might do a few variations and sort of see how they go. Once I've got the kettle going, I just take the petal in its flat form and um, with my lovely battered dyeing tongs. When you put it in the steam, the, the glue that we use to put the two layers together goes really soft. I just start to push it and pull it and it will start to take on petal-like shape. So I take a petal, put this on top, a bit of damp, damp tea towel, and take one of these irons lovely and burnt and um, it should make a hissing noise and I put it on the thing so push it around let it go and it should take on the shape of the iron it's a normal hat with a normal flower that's just been pushed by the wind on this Caribbean island and we've got little petals coming away here and it just all sort of goes in a really organic way. I moved out of London about um, 18 months ago and uh, the guild, well I went to a guild show so I was really impressed with the exhibition and I um, just put in an application. So right after I had my interview they asked me to exhibit at the Painswick exhibition. I just, I mean I had about a week's notice, It was they were so lovely and I went straight in and it gave me a, a, um, a bit of a foundation in this area. And I think it's, it's an extraordinary privilege really to have three exhibitions a year that I can take part in. Um, I suppose I'm one of the younger members of the Guild, but really I'm, I'm looking for as many opportunities as possible to show my work and to meet other makers. I came to Millinery because I was doing costume design um, and I wanted to have a few, um, maybe some specialist skills. So I did a bit of corset making and some other things and some millinery. And then the millinery really took over and I did um, just two years of training at Kensington and Chelsea College. I get interested in themes. At the moment, I'm doing a lot with the interiors, really. So wallpapers, china patterns, bits of chandelier, all sorts of things like that. Um, and I suppose that's just, I suppose I'd just like to develop in that way and make my work more sophisticated as I go forward. <laughs>